I talked to one of my buddies yesterday. He's a Tennessee fan, and he told me straight up, he's like, man, I can't believe how great Jalen Milrow has looked in the past couple of games. The people that were riding off Alabama, the only reason they were riding them off is because, oh, yeah, y'all don't have a quarterback? Yeah, y'all ain't going to beat anybody. <laughs> this is bad news. and I mean, it's some very bad news for the rest of the country. If you're an Alabama fan, this is good news. And the reason I know it's bad news for the rest of the country and all the other teams out there is because their fans have told me they're straight up scared. I'm not going to throw their names out there. They know who they are. But I got a couple buddies that are Tennessee and Georgia fans, and I'm going to tell you what they had to say about this in just a second. But first things first, let me say this. We're not doing no intro, none of that. We're getting straight into it. And I hope each and every single one of you, you have a great Friday. Hope you had a great week. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. Today's a great day. You know why it's a great day? Well, nothing actually for the day itself. It just means we're one day closer to the day we all love the most, Saturday. I don't care what anybody says. If you're a college football fan, nothing, let me repeat that word, nothing can compare to a Saturday where you wake up at 7, 8 a.m., watch a little bit of TV, cook you a nice breakfast, maybe you go out a little bit, then you watch football from 11 a.m. till 2 a.m. the following morning. Nothing can compare. And I think the perfect day would actually be to wake up Saturday morning, and I've done this a couple times, at about 6 a.m. and get you a nice 18 holes in of golf and then watch college football all day. That's my dream day. I'm getting a little sidetracked here. You get the point. We're one day closer to the day we all love the most. And you've probably noticed all throughout this week on the channel, we haven't talked about Alabama football too much. And there's a good reason for that. Because although we haven't been talking about them, or at least I haven't been talking about them, I've been listening to what everybody else has to say. I've been paying attention, jotting down some notes, and just seeing an outsider perspective. And from every single person I've heard talk about this Alabama team, it goes either one or two ways. Way number one is you get some people saying, man, this Alabama team, they're coming off that big win against A&M. They're just getting better and better and better every single week, and I don't see them losing another game on their schedule. And the other way people are talking about this Alabama team, ironically enough, is they're not talking. Sometimes no response is a response. It's like when somebody takes me something stupid Stupid, or they ask me a question and then I don't respond and either a they call me or I see them in person and they're like oh yeah did you get my text did you see it and I say yeah I saw it and they say oh well you didn't respond and I say the same thing every time no me not responding that's the response applying that analogy to this situation is the same exact thing with Jalen Milrow and Alabama have you noticed this week all those Jalen Milrow doubters and critics and all the Alabama doubters and critics they haven't said a single word. They've gone back into hibernation. They're like, oh, man, I thought this was going to be the year we could put Alabama on blast, but guess we're going to have to wait until next year, maybe. And by the way, I hate to be the bear bad news, but Alabama's going to be better next year than they are this year. But that's a completely different conversation for a different day. That's something we'll talk about in the offseason. But getting back on track here, these haters and critics and people not saying anything, it's because they're shocked. They don't know what to say. Because they saw a Texas team go into Bryant-Denny Stadium, which is rare. The last time Alabama lost at home was in 2019. And they saw a Texas team not just beat Alabama, but they beat them handily by double digits. You can't make it up. And I understand doubting this Alabama team and not saying they're as good as they used to be. But the stuff people were saying, talking about Alabama's going to go 8-4, they might go 7-5, and five, that was ludicrous and ridiculous. And I'll be the first person to tell you this. We even made a video about this. Yes, I do think this is the beginning of the end to the fall off of the Alabama dynasty. But do you understand what I mean when I say the beginning of the end? In dynasties, you have stages. For example, Nick Saban's been at Alabama for, what, 15 years? The first five years Saban was there, that was the beginning of the dynasty. The next five to six years, you could say from 2011 to 2017, that's when the dynasty's in its prime. Then from 2017, 2018 to I guess you'd say 2022 or 2023. Yeah, the dynasty's not falling off, but it's past the prime stage. And fast forward time to now, it's 2023. And yeah, I think the dynasty only has about five to six years left. So theoretically speaking, we're at the beginning of the end. And my reasoning for that is fairly simple. Nick Saban only has about five, six, seven at max eight years left. But I got to clarify this and I've done it time after time, but I guess people misinterpret it. I don't think the dynasty is falling off today. I don't think it's falling off this season or next. I'm just stating if you want to look at this from a dynasty perspective, this is the beginning of the end, and I really can't dumb it down more than that, guys. To myself, I sound like a broken record player trying to explain it. I hope you get my point. I say all that to say this. You had all these people in the media. No, they were writing off Alabama now. 
they're saying, yep, it's over. Saban's lost his touch. He no longer has the edge. This isn't the same Alabama team we saw in the recent years. I'm going to remind y'all, these people in the media thought Al after that Texas game, they thought Alabama was going to win eight games. They're out here trying to tell you and feed you this BS that Nick Saban's just a good head coach and he's got a good team. They're no longer great. Like, what? Come on, man. And I'm not saying Alabama's going to win the championship this year, but you got to be joking or doing something if you think Alabama was only going to win eight games this year. Get out of here with that BS. And you got to try to see their perspective and try to understand where they're coming from. So I say, let's do it. Let's look at what they looked at. These people saw Alabama lose their second game of the year against Texas, 34 to 24. People aren't used to seeing Alabama lose this early in the regular season. I get it. And the problem with all of this, 98% of people people out here that aren't Bama fans, they have what I like to call quote-unquote Bama fatigue. They're not just sick and tired. They are beyond. They are far past sick and tired of seeing Alabama dominate this sport. So when somebody has Bama fatigue, as soon as they ha even have a slither of a chance to throw Alabama to the fire and throw Nick Saban to the fire, that's what they're going to do. People out here can't stand Alabama. They're ready for them to be gone. They hate it, man. They absolutely hate it. They're ready to see some new faces. And people thought after this Texas game, this was going to be the year you could throw Alabama to the fire because they don't have a good quarterback. And then we watched them against USF. That was a complete mess. We've already talked all about that. And that even encouraged people even more. They was like, oh, yeah, this is it. It's wraps. It's done. So it's wait until Nick Saban gets an SEC play. And well, 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 here we are. Couple weeks later, and all Nick Saban and Alabama has done is go three and zero. They're now sitting in an extremely pretty situation at five and one, in which they control their own destiny. I don't want to sit up here and say the Texas game didn't matter, but on the grand scheme of things, it didn't matter. It's a relatively simple game plan. If Alabama wins out, they're in. If they lose in every game, they're not in. But we're getting a little too far ahead of ourselves. Here's what has scared people, and this is coming from some people I've talked to. I talked to one of my buddies yesterday. He's a Tennessee fan, and he told me straight up, he's like, man. I can't believe how great Jalen Milrow has looked in the past couple of games. Remind y'all, this is a Tennessee fan. This is a fan that's supposed to hate Alabama. And we was chopping it up a little bit, talking about the Tennessee-Alabama game just for a couple of seconds, and he kept it short and simple. He's like, oh yeah, we don't have a chance. I think Joe Milrow is way better than Joe Milton. You can do what you please with that information, but thought it was an interesting perspective. To go on top of that, I think it was about two or three days ago, I talked to one of my buddies that's a Georgia fan, and he said the same thing. He said a lot of Georgia fans won't admit it, but... Our biggest fear is to play Alabama in the SEC championship because we know what happens. Every single time Alabama matches up with Georgia, somehow, some way, Georgia somehow loses a game they should win. He said, we should beat y'all, but you know dang well, Matt, we probably won't beat y'all. Yet again, another interesting perspective, and I asked both of them, why are you scared of Alabama? And oh yeah, to give you more context and perspective, these are a couple of my buddies that are 40 and 50 years old. These aren't kids. These aren't even guys my age. They're mature. They're wise. They know their stuff. And they both told me pretty much the same answer. Alabama's clicking. They're finding their groove. And Jail Miro's just getting better and better and better and more comfortable. And one of them even told me if Jail Miro's playing the way he did against Texas A&M, I don't know who could beat Bama. And when I listened to what they had to say about Alabama and Jalen Milrow, I was like, yep, that makes a lot of sense. The people that were riding off Alabama, the only reason they were riding them off is because, oh yeah, y'all don't have a quarterback? Yeah, y'all ain't gonna beat anybody. Well, what has happened is in the past couple of weeks, these people out here, the outsiders, they have seen Jalen Milrow progress and get better and better and better every single week. And it's scaring people because everybody with a brain knows if Alabama has good, and it doesn't even gotta be great. If you just have good quarterback play, with all the talent they have surrounding the quarterback, they can beat anybody. Let's take a look at these numbers against Ole Miss. Jalen Milrow was 17 for 21, only had four incompletions, 225 passing yards, one touchdown to one interception. That'll get the job done. Yeah, he had one interception, but I can overlook it because he's going to make plays. You got to understand with Jalen Milrow, heading into the game, he just got marked down one interception. He's going to have one. Next week against Mississippi State, on the road, 10 for 12, 164 yards, zero touchdowns, zero INTs, but he had three rushing touchdowns. He was killer on the ground. Did what he needed to do. The fall week on the road yet again 21 for 33 that'll get the job done 321 passing yards 
three touchdowns to one INT. But what's most impressive about all this, and it's not going to show up on the stat sheet, is Milro diced AM through the air in the long passing game. He wasn't just throwing dump offs to wide receivers like Jalen Waddle or Devontae Smith and letting them run it for 75 yards. No, 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 no. Check out this stat. Jalen Milro had six passes of 20 yards or more against Texas AM. Six. When it comes to short and mid accuracy, he's not the best. But when it comes to deep ball accuracy, he might be the best in the SEC. And that's what impressed me because I can't even remember the last time I saw an Alabama quarterback throwing that many deep passes on the money. And if he can do that, I don't see anybody beating Alabama. And you also got to throw in there, he beat AM by himself. Alabama only had 23 rushing yards. That does concern me as a Bama fan. We got to fix the running game because Milrow needs help. Every quarterback needs help, but good gosh almighty, Milrow didn't even need help against AM. He did it himself. If he keeps this up and what I've seen in the past couple of weeks, I think we need to change the conversation and flip the narrative. Because previously it was, okay, we just need Milrow to not mess up and don't have any turnovers. But now I think the conversation should be, Jalen Milrow can beat you himself if you don't prepare for him. Is that crazy of me to say? He dominated Ole Miss in the second half. He dominated Mississippi State from start to finish. And he completely destroyed AM from start to finish. This Alabama team, and not just Jalen Milrow, but the offensive line, I didn't even speak on them. We'll talk about them in a different video. The entire team, offensive line, everybody, they're getting better and better and better every single week. And that's scary. You know why it's scary? Because Nick Saban is one of those guys who can catch lightning in a bottle. Make no mistakes about it. This isn't even close to an average Alabama team for him, but with his coaching abilities, he can catch lightning in a bottle. I'll leave it at that. Do what you want with that information. I'm very curious. Let me know your thoughts down below, but uh, right with my name.